A couple of years ago, a beginning electronic student contacted me, and he wanted to know why it was the bridge rectifier in his power supply blew up when he was testing the voltage on it. All he had done is taken out his multimeter, put it on the voltage select, and he took the meter probes, put them across the bridge, and bang, saw a bright flash, probably arc welded the tip of one of his probes, and undoubtedly ruined the bridge rectifier. Well, it turned out he didn't understand the importance of making sure his meter probes were in the right ports of the meter. And instead of having them in the voltage measuring ports, he had it in the current measuring ports, <clears throat> and he didn't understand how that creates a dead short across these two meter probes here. In fact, he may as well have done this. He may as well have just taken the two ports and put a wire across them like this, because that's essentially what the circuit saw. And the reason for that short is a device inside of the meter known as a shunt, and that's used to calibrate the meter to read a particular scale. So, for example, if you take a look at the back of these amperometers, you'll notice that they all have what appears to be a short across the input terminal, <clears throat> and depending on the scale of the meter is what is calibrated by the size of the shunt. So, for example, if you take a look at these four meters here, you might note that all four of them are identical, except for the print on the front and the size of the shunt on the rear. Now, if you take a look at this one on the left here, you'll note that this one measures from 0 to 5 amperes, 0 to 10, 0 to 30, and 0 to 60. And naturally, the 0 to 60 is going to have the largest shunt because what the shunt does is it creates a voltage, or rather a current division, across the load. So some of the current that would normally go into the load is going to go into the meter. And the amount of current going into the load is determined by the size of the shunt. So this particular shunt has less resistance because it's thicker, so less current's going to go into the meter, whereas the one on the far right here is much thinner and it's a lot more sensitive. Now when I'm doing troubleshooting, most of the time I use what's known as a milliamp meter. Basically the milliamp meter is a uh, shows me finer finer increments of current. So for example, one one on this meter would read full scale on this meter. Milli means a thousand. And full scale here would mean 1000 milliamps, which is the same as one amper. Now this particular meter also has another port which I can divide half of an amp into the full scale reading. That's why you have two different scales on this. And this is the one I most commonly use when I'm doing electronic troubleshooting. Most of the time when you're troubleshooting circuits, you're not going to see real high currents going through them. You may on occasion, and there are cases where you'll need something that'll measure a much higher current like this here. But for small scale current measurement, you're probably going to use a milliamp meter on either your multimeter or perhaps one of these. Now there are lots of different types of amper meters. This particular one is something that automotive troubleshooters often use. It doesn't even have an electrical input on it. It's just got this channel here that you lay your wire inside, and this measures the magnetic field strength coming off the wire. I've got another one here that's capable of measuring up to 600 amperes, and you could probably put your starter wire for your uh, starter in your vehicle right across this channel here and uh, get a good reading that way. Now what's uh, kind of neat about these meters here is they, they actually measure the magnetic field strength. So for example, if I take this little magnet here, put it on the back of the channel, you can see this thing goes crazy. So I suppose if you wanted to measure the strength of your magnets, you could use it in that way as well. Here I've got another shunt, by the way. This particular one is a quadruple shunt. This will calibrate a, a meter that's probably very similar to this to read up to 500 amperes. And it tells you right here, in fact, it converts it to millivolts. So you could put your meter on the millivolt scale, put your load across these two terminals, and measure the current. Now, I, I imagine uh, most of you understand that it's important that you measure your your amperes in series, not in parallel. Here's a series circuit, so for example, if we want to measure the current going through this lamp here, we simply cut one of the wires, put the meter in series with the load, not in parallel. You can imagine what would happen if you took the amper meter and put it right across the battery. You'd have fireworks. Now, here's one other kind of amper meter I use from time to time. This is an inductive amp meter, and this is a pretty old one here. I really like these little gadgets, so they come in handy every once in a while. And this is for measuring AC ampers, and basically the way it works, you, you simply clamp it across one of the wires going to the load like this. 
In fact, what I do is I usually just plug this end into the wall, and then my load gets plugged into this end. Now this particular scale measures from 0 to 6 amperes. You can change the scale by doing this. <clears throat> now, uh, 0 to 6 amperes may not be sensitive enough for you, so what you can do on this type of a meter is you can simply double the turns and that doubles the scale. So what would read 1 amp is now going to read 2 amps. Or you can turn 1 amp into 3 amps by doing this. And that can come in handy. If you're checking an electronic component, you want to see if it's drawing too much current for some reason. It's a handy little gadget to have. Anyway, I guess that about covers it. I just thought I'd better cover that again. Ever since that gentleman called me, I realized that a lot of beginning students are watching my videos and uh, don't want to see you all blowing anything up. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.